Dynamite Open with John Moxley and Roosh. Continental Classic match. Excellent opener. I think their first match may have been better, but this was still two dudes just beating the crap out of each other. And uh, Roosh hit all his big moves, went for the bull's horns. Moxley Lariat, Death Rider. Roosh kicked out. Mox choked him out, unconscious. And then Roosh woke up and was angry. And the ref had to tell him, no, man, you went out. Mox in the lead with nine points. We had Renee interviewing Roddy in the kingdom. Roddy ripped off. Actually, he didn't rip off the neck. He's still wearing the neck brace, but he uh, he stood up. He would no longer be uh, a victim of the consequences that put him in this wheelchair. Just still a dork. He threw it off the ramp, threw down the mic. He has risen. Roderick Strong. Brian! Yeah. Does that a lot now. Too much. Stop it. Dude, the fans are so into that, bro. Don't be old. Yeah, well, they also were into beach balls and what in the wave, and that all sucked. Yeah, well, that was stupid. People people popping for a guy? Not stupid. Renee went to interview Max. Hangman stormed into frame. So Hangman is very angry at Swerve, and he has essentially stated... I know what you want more than anything. I promise after what you did to me, you're never going to have it. So at some point, it it seems very obvious, Swerve is going to be challenging for the world title, and Hangman's going to screw him out of it. So then MJF shows up. He says, man, that match was impressive. Amazing watching two guys battle it out so you could get more STDs. Hangman's angry. I don't have 30 minutes to listen to you talk. MJF says, I talk for 30 minutes to wake the crowd up when guys like you go out there. So now Hangman's mad. They go back and forth, and uh, Joe separates them. So add Hangman to the uh, list of guys that MJF will be uh, at some point defending the title against. And it opens the door because they haven't said it on TV. We've had a bunch of fan theories about who the devil can be. Could it be MJF himself that is engineering all of this stuff? And you actually had a baby face come right out and say, you know what, I think it's you. Whether it is or not, we'll see. What, uh, I don't advocate for this. Let me say it again. I don't advocate for this, but I have a question. Nor advocating for this. I have a question. Yes. What are the consequences if you interfere in the Continental Classic? Automatic DQ, I would assume, lose the points. Well, no, if you, if you, my point is, let's say that Swerve and, uh, and Moxley are having a match. And, you know, if if Swerve loses, you know, he's not going to go to the finals or whatever. Like, what is stopping Hangman from just interfering, costing him the match? Nothing. And, in fact, if you're going to do it with anybody in this tournament, the one that makes the most sense is Hangman because he's still the one who's got a real personal beef. If you look at all the wrestling feuds that they have, Look at what it's been about. So he's okay, so people here are saying people here are saying that the uh, the consequence is you will be fired. So they said you'll be fired. Okay. Did he actually? Was that part of it? The person was going to be fired. Maybe he was suspended till the end of the year. Was that it? Because oh, the announcer. The announcer the said year? once in passing that you would be fired. Fired. Hmm. They, the announcer said that. Well, anyway. Well, you know, all I'm saying is this: I'm not advocating for that kind of finish or anything like that in this Continental Classic. But the fact of the matter is. This guy went to Hangman's house, he broke in, and he cut a promo on his kid in the crib. Like, Hangman's angry, dude. Can Would I, he risk getting fired to keep this guy away from the world title? Maybe. Can I say this, though? They keep people off TV for a long time, and I'm not saying that this is the best idea in the world, but honestly, Hangman Page is, again, I think he's the spirit of AEW when it comes to their fans, but right now, Swerve Strickland is such a babyface, and he's going to be continue to be treated like a babyface if you do something like that. And then, again, keep them away for a while. Keep Page then involved in something else until it comes around again where people want to boo Swerve for what he does. <clears throat> you know, pardon me, then maybe you can come back to this. We had Swerve and Mark Briscoe in a tournament match. This might have been my favorite match of the evening. It's a toss-up, this in the uh, the Moxley match. But I think it actually was this one. These guys this were awesome. really good. And this Mark Briscoe, 
This guy is so underrated, <laughs> and now he's out of the tournament. He lost for the third time. He well, cannot win the, the tournament. tournament. Can't win it. He can but spoil he can spoiler, things for people, but there uh, you go. he's out. Swerve gave him the DVD. Swerve Stomp got the pin. This match ruled. There are a lot of people who are acting like this round-robin tournament is, you know, high arithmetic. You know, it's really not that difficult. And now anybody that's there wrestling who is eliminated can be a spoiler, can be a pain. I don't know why this is so annoying for some people when it comes to how this tournament's set up. And then Renee was with Mariah May. And you remember when I was talking about how she just keeps bringing up stardom? And people are like, oh, you know, it's okay. You know, I don't mind them telling you about uh, something someone did in the past. Bro, we're beyond that now. That's our gimmick. We are. This is this is a bizarre part of this gimmick where every time she's on the screen, she's like, uh, Tony loves me. I met with Tony. He loved my career when I was in stardom in Japan. Me and Mina. Like, what is happening here with this stardom thing? She hasn't said that yet. But uh, she said, ah, you know, what's most important is Tony's match tonight. I can't wait to be there for that. Do you know her and Mina did everything together? I did not know that. Got to find that clip to play on the show. Uh, Joe came out for his match. He was going to team with MJF tonight. But lights go out. Devil appears on the screen. And uh, MJF is in the parking lot surrounded by broken glass. Joe sprints backstage. And Taz notes, we never saw who attacked MJF. Mm-hmm. I uh, went over the lineup yesterday. Was there a... Joe and MJF were going to do a match at some yes. point. But, like, did they have a match scheduled for this show? Yes. Who was it? They. It was the the mysterious Devil's Henchman. That's right. That's right. That's when, that's when everything But interestingly enough, rewards. they didn't really advertise that. They just said it was going to happen. So yeah. technically this was not false advertising, but we didn't get the match. Mm, I right. don't know. That, that you might be splitting some hairs there when it comes to that. Had a Moxie promo and Swerve showed up and they're facing off in Texas. Chaos. We had uh, Ben Mankiewicz, Mankiewicz, Mankiewicz. of Turner so hard for Classic you? Movies. Introducing Tony, and he refused to say her entire catchphrase. Tease out. Do you think I? Do you think I watch a lot of Turner classic movies, brother? Do I look like a guy that's watching a lot of the classics? No, but like you know, it's not like Mankiewicz is the you know such an exotic name, is it? It is for me. A lot of names are exotic. You don't know. You, you got don't a know problem with Polish that, folks? I have no problem admitting it. I can't pronounce any words. Runs in the family. That's why I'm on the radio. Tony Storm and Sky Blue for the women's title. Tony countered a cradle into a cradle, got the pin. It was a, uh, it was good. I wrote fine. Dave thought it was really good. It was right. You know, it's everybody's opinion. Yeah. But what is not an opinion is what is with this Riho thing? Guess who's back in the title picture? <laughs> sure to lose and then vanish again for another six months. It's like. It's literally like it should be advertised in advance. (laughs) December is coming. It will be time for our annual Riho return. She will insert herself into the title picture. People will cheer wildly. She will get over, lose, and then vanish. It's like on the schedule now. Jay White, Jay Lethal. So uh, Jay got the heat on Jay. Jay made a comeback. Fans chanted, thank you, Jay. And then Jay pinned Jay to win. Mm-mm. Jay Lethal has been eliminated. It's a good match. It's a very professional match. It wasn't like a, you know, <laughs> like a fantastic match or anything, but it was it was very good. And then yes, Christian and Adam Copeland for the TNT title. This was also the same thing, two pros. And by the way, we had a third we had we had 3 Js in a row. Isn't that weird? No? Okay, anyway. These guys had a great match. People don't know uh, Christian is Jay. And then, yes, as I noted earlier, they hit each other with a double spear and went down. Actually, first, uh, Adam avoided a spear, bumped into the ref. The ref's back is turned. Christian boots this guy right in the balls, and uh, and down that. he goes. So and I get in trouble. You know, the, the, uh, the argument for those of you that are going to defend this company to the death... Well, the ref didn't know who kicked him in the nuts. Therefore, he can't call for a DQ. <laughs> Where are the second referees are run out there? So then uh, Shayna runs down a ringside, grabs the belt, looks at both guys, ends up wallowing, uh, waffling Adam with the belt, 
And, you know, the announcers are like, why would she do that? And it was like, you guys don't get it. Do you guys have kids? I know Taz does. Yeah. Christian is a total jerk. Mm-hmm. He's a horrible person. Yeah. And I say that from my heart. He's a horrible person. But. Would know. But. He yeah. looked after young Nick Wayne. That's it, yeah. And this other guy, this Adam Copeland. Mm-hmm. Well, how many times did he spear Nick Wayne? A dozen? A lot. Every single time they were in the ring together, he speared this poor guy. And then with his mother sitting in the corner of the ring, he took a chair and he, he crushed this youngster's skull. Felonious assault and battery. You realize Nick Wayne's only 18. His brain hasn't even fully developed yet, and you gave him a concerto. And now you guys are wondering why Shayna would have turned on Adam Copeland? It's quite obvious to me. Woman's justified. So, anyway. Then, uh, yes, the ref screams, go, go, go! Christian covers him, he pins him. Because Bryce knew this YouTube TV is going to screw this whole thing up. (laughs) Cover this guy. Hurry up! So they did. And uh, Christian retained the title. And exactly as I try to tell you people, they're going to be doing a stipulation rematch, I'm sure, at the World's End pay-per-view. Because you're not just going to do a big old title change on free TV. I don't care where it's at. It was so obvious where this was going. I was mocked and ridiculed. Will you shut up? If I had a a quarter for every time I was mocked and ridiculed, I'd have a lot of quarters. Yeah, and guess where you can insert them. You you know, look, I hope that they get a partner for Christian. I hope Shane Wayne decides to stick around. I hope she of is Of course there she's as, sticking around. She's her, a regular now. She's Ma Bass to, to her son and whoever his tag team partner is going to be, and they become a complete menace. And I'm, I'm hoping for that. So good on them looking out for her. Good on them looking out for Nick. And obviously there's a bias here at this website, but... Good on everybody for taking care of, of of what Buddy Wayne started. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.